you're tuned into Inside Lowell. Inside Lowell podcast brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. WellPoint. Unicare is now WellPoint. New name, same commitment to Massachusetts. At WellPoint, your whole health is their whole point. Boston North Company, offering a wide variety of business solutions to help restaurant and retail clients save money. Boston North. Mahoney Oil Company, providing warmth and protection to families in Greater Lowell and Southern New Hampshire since 1925. That's Mahoney Oil. Francis E. Preventure Insurance, For auto, home, business, and life, trust the agency Greater Lowell has counted on for more than 40 years. Francis E. Preventure Insurance. GoPuff, a grocery store right at your fingertips. Use the code LOWELL20 to receive $20 off your first order of $21, plus free delivery. Download the GoPuff app or visit gopuff.com today. And by the Massachusetts Pirates, bringing all the hard-hitting action and excitement of arena football to the Songa Center in Lowell. Get your tickets today by visiting MassPiratesFootball.com. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast. I am your host, Teddy Panos, coming to you from the WellPoint Studios here in beautiful downtown Lowell. Unicare is now WellPoint. New name, same commitment to Massachusetts and to you. At WellPoint, your whole health is their whole home. Point. Very excited to be joined by a couple of our gentlemen this morning who uh, just recently announced a, a major grant that is going to be helping us here in the community of Lowell, in particular with health care and behavioral health. Uh, first, you, you, you've seen Kevin Coughlin on our podcast once or twice before, but Kevin is the executive director of the Mass Hire Greater Lowell Workforce Board. Welcome back, Kevin. Good to have you here. Good morning, Teddy. Nice to be here with you and your followers. Thank you. You come back one more time and we may just have to launch your own podcast series and channel. So you're- That's an attractive offer. That's an attractive offer. uh... (laughs) But you have more important things to do, right? (laughs) I don't know. We're always open to negotiation on good topics, of course. (laughs) Sounds good. I can't pay much, but I can offer great benefits. Get to hang around the office. Well, we'll go for that. (laughs) All right. <laughs> Brian Sock is the gentleman to the left of your monitor. Brian is the program coordinator for the Workforce Training Fund and these new health care grants. Welcome to you, Brian. Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks Good. for having me. Great to have you. How long have you been with uh, the I started, Mass Hire Board? I started there last July. Okay. Oh. So coming up on your one-year anniversary. Yeah, very close. You yeah. must have been excited as heck when this announcement came out. Uh, what was it, about uh, two, three weeks ago now, mm-hmm. Kevin? Yes, yeah, uh, we approximately three weeks. Yes. All right. for, for those who uh, aren't aware of this grant, and by the way, there is a story on InsideLowell.com where you can learn all the details about it, uh, if you forget anything that we say along this podcast. But tell us a little bit about this. This is We're talking a little over $4 million, and where where is it going to be put to use in our community? Well, it's uh, combined for over $4 million. As we break it down, uh, we're, we're cooperating uh, with two other workforce boards, one in Lawrence and one in the North Shore in Salem. So we actually are splitting the total amount by three. And it's being applied in two areas. First, in the healthcare side, to uh, identify and develop and then hire the most needed positions in healthcare that they're having the most trouble Mm -hmm. in the recruitment. And then on the behavioral health side, we really look at this as a first step in uh, doing community outreach and community penetration, having to do with this very, very difficult. And, you know, uh, sometimes it seems like um, you can only make a a small start to go at it, but it's the behavioral health side. Mm -hmm. So we are rallying the partners over behavioral health. Yeah, and, and that is something, as we've become aware, especially in the aftermath of the pandemic, the, the mental health issues, behavioral health issues are really becoming a challenge for the medical community and, and tying up, from what we understand, our hospital emergency rooms all across the Commonwealth and the entire country, for that matter, right? Yeah. Yes, it's gone uh, actually from what used to be, you know, what they called psychological patients in the emergency room issue. 
It's now uh, inside the hospital where nursing staff and others, uh, clinicians are dealing with it on all the floors of the inpatient units. And it's also come back to our businesses and back to our agencies because individuals that are entering that workplace or entering the agencies for services um, are suffering uh, more behavioral health issues than ever before. Mm -hmm. So we all we all deal with it every day, and uh, this is the whole purpose of this grant. So, Brian, how is this? How does this grant work, and how will it be administered in our uh, region? Well, this is a grant that will try to pay for training for individuals that want to become, you know, a part of the behavioral health industry. Uh, you know, we're focusing on certain occupations like recovery coaches, uh, mental health peer support specialists, mm -hmm. addiction counselors, and, you know, occupations like that. And because it's a three-year grant, there's room to try and expand it in years two and try to adapt it to, you know, different needs that the industry has. And is it being done in conjunction with educational institutes or is it d directly with you folks over there at Mass Hire? It, it's a mix. We have Middlesex Community College for Lowell, Greater Lowell. We're also trying to get North Shore Community College, uh, Northern Essex, Essex, Essex Community College. And we also have employer uh, partners that are also a part of the training, like Trinity Pride Star EMS and Trinity Care Associates right in this building. So who's eligible? Who, who can... What, is it is it individuals or companies uh, or these these medical uh, facilities? Who, who's eligible to participate here? Well, individuals that would take advantage of the training uh, would be employ, unemployed or underemployed individuals, mm -hmm. meaning that their salaries are so low that they can't exist. Uh, in terms of uh, actually the companies and the training providers, uh, these are select providers in the area that to which we've reached out have great need and we've identified their toughest positions and many of these employers both on the health side and the behavioral health side have had long-standing openings for positions so if we took the what they call nursing assistants cnas mm -hmm. uh, you know care care assistants um, on the behavioral health side some of these uh, brian just mentioned uh, the peer recovery coaching or peer assistance some of these uh, openings are two two things one long time long time to get people to come into these professions and the second one the burnout rate is so high you get people that come in and they encounter so much especially on the behavioral health side that uh, the turnover is something that's very hard to grapple with so we're raising the ante with the training and trying to incentivize so that the companies can have these new employees and we can assist them, and that's our mission through Mass Hire. And, and the companies involved, we're not necessarily talking about the, the major health providers that, we, that we're all familiar with, LGH, Low General, or, or even the Community Health Center. You're talking about kind of smaller individual practices? Uh, no, um, Low General Hospital is also a partner oh, okay. on this. And, you know, we're trying to just help the industry as much as we can, whether it's through, like, community-based organizations but also these major hospitals are also involved. Mm -hmm. And do you have people already signed up? Do you have partners signed up in this for, yeah. for the for, for year one? This is actually a three-year program, we said, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So who's signed up already? We have about like 10 to 14 partners. Um, I'll try to name them off the top of my head. Uh, we got Lowell General, Middlesex Community College, uh, the Bridge Club of Greater Lowell, mm -hmm. Trinity Care Associates, uh, there's several more, but at yeah, least Pride Star, Pride, Pride Star, Trinity Pride Star. Um, but but um, you're, this, this is kind of running the full the full gamut, correct, of healthcare in yeah. our in our area. And what type of certifications are, are we talking about here for the individuals who are taking the training? Uh, it depends on what training they go for, but some of the certifications, if they do recovery coaching, they could get a certified addiction recovery coach or mental health peer support certificate. And other another one would be the addictions counselor certificate at Middlesex. Okay, and and these are certificates that are required to actually work in licensed facilities, right? And and yeah. in some of these fields, yeah. I, as I know through some of my work with the and, Megan and, House Foundation. And in addition to local certificates, like uh, an approved course through the colleges, uh, like Middlesex, there may be an additional state requirement as well for a certification right. because of patient contact. How, how intense? are the programs uh, and, and how long 
does the the training last? Are we talking about a, a couple of years here, like some of college programs, or are we talking? Is this something that can be I mean, done in a few months? I mean, I think it needs to be said that you know the behavioral health industry is really intense in of itself, and people are you know suffering mentally, and the most difficult credential would be, I would say, the addiction counselor. Uh, that is very academically rigorous, and it is probably the longest. It takes about a year to complete. Mm -hmm. And uh, are there going to be uh, any other things that are rolled out in years two and or three, or is is everything that's going to be a part of this right? You're coming out of right out of the gate with it. Um, I I'm working on trying to get different programs in year two, and mm -hmm. I've already spoken with a couple partners, and there will be different programs in year two and year three. Okay, because it sounds like it's going to be so successful, and if you already have that many people right. signed up, over, you know, close to a dozen, if not more, then you know they're going to want to come back in in the second and third year because everybody I talk to in these fields is desperate for for help, and they're short staffed, and they Absolutely. just can't get enough people post pandemic to get back into these fields. What we're finding in some uh, of these professions is that. Uh, the need is so great that the employer, and that's the link here, right? The trainer and the employer uh, are so anxious to get some of these employees that um, they can actually start or they could be employed. They don't have to be unemployed. They could be an incumbent even. And that because of this extra training, they're able to find uh, a niche or a pathway, you know, that pays more, but makes them uh, more valuable to the employer. We're chatting with Kevin Coughlin off to the right of your screen, Brian Sock uh, to the left there with Mass Hire Greater Lowell Workforce Board talking about an exciting new program, Job Force Training Program that involves two major grant awards. And we're glad to have them here in our WellPoint studios with us. Uh, so, Kevin, we, we talk about this all the time. We talked about it when you were here talking about the Q-Ride program. All of this stuff sounds great, and it is great, and it costs money. It programs like this, training, education, et cetera, cost money. How's the funding working on this? Where did it come from originally? Well, the, the first piece is uh, this program is called the Workforce Competitive Fund, and um, it comes through the state. It's federal money that came to the state. The state has given it to an organization that works mm -hmm. with the state for awarding these called Comcore, Commonwealth Corporation, and then they distribute it. Originally, it started as APA money, mm -hmm. so uh, the money has uh, broad uses, and then the state narrowed it down and where they wanted to go. And of course, the highest need now is in medical and behavioral health. So as it filters down, um, they tried to prioritize in which agencies. So some some of the money goes directly to those that are giving actually the services, but for us, it's the lane is employment. So it's training and employment for us and. The need is so great in the area, especially at entry level positions. And uh, uh, I'm glad to talk one more point too. In addition to that, we've actually repositioned some of these. It's a key point to the grant that, for instance, if you took that CNA position in the hospital, uh, many would consider that a dead end job. So it sits open for a long, long time and you can't get people that wish to apply. If it's a dead end job, you don't have a future in that agency or in that institution unless you go and seek another job. We've repositioned these and aligned them with the training so that a CNA position now is the first step in a path in a pathway. So the pathway can lead them to a be a phlebotomist, it could be a nursing assistant, it could be a radiological technician, mm -hmm. and they no longer get stuck at the lower echelon. And with that, they get pay raises as well. So it's a pathway for someone sure. who may not have training but wants to get into that medical profession. And for the individuals who may be watching this and, and are now interested and want to learn more, what, is there a minimum requirement, minimum age, a high school diploma or GED? Do you have to be 18 and older? What, what's the minimum requirement to be able to get in and participate? 18 and older uh, and be a Massachusetts resident. Okay, so it, it could be theoretically for somebody who's never even worked or thought of working in these fields, but it's... Yeah, yeah. part of the eligibility is unemployed and underemployed. And if you're 18 and in Massachusetts, you can definitely 
try to apply and uh, become part of this grant. And there's no age cap. So somebody no. middle age is, who's got to or reenter after, you know, maybe staying at home to raise the kids or whatever, Absolutely. wants to reenter the workforce. This also applies to them. It's, yes. per, it's perfect for a range of individuals, um, you know, especially long-term care facilities. Uh, you start, we talk about acute care in a hospital, but there's other facilities like low community health where they deal with a very diverse population. And there's also long-term facilities like the nursing homes and whatnot. All of them are in need of these positions. So there's a spot if you think there's a, a need and you have it in your mind that you wish to do it. Uh, this would be a program you should investigate. All right. And I thank you. You once again beautifully transitioned me to the final point I wanted to get to. You mentioned uh, you're working with uh, North Shore and up in the greater Lawrence area, Northern Essex Community College, et cetera. Those are diverse areas, diverse communities. But as we know, Lowell, I mean, 70-something different languages spoken in our city. I, I lose track of it because we seem to add one or two every, every year or so. But how are you making sure you reach out to those communities and folks who may you know there may be a language barrier but they're still able to participate and how do you handle the trainings for folks like that i think you know trying to target support for you know english as a second language and you know utilizing our career centers to help boost the english language um, navigating that is definitely key but we also have translated some of the uh, flyers and stuff okay. in different languages. Okay. And can we marry this with QRide, Kevin? And once these people receive these certifications and the training and then they get out and get hired, they can also take a QRide to get to work. A hundred percent. We're actually, uh, we're utilizing uh, QRide now. Uh, we're, we're due to come back and talk about QRide again. They've successfully done over 1,700 trips so far. And we're utilizing them for very diverse populations for employment. And it's worked out very well. So there's a spark of success that's in this quotient somewhere. The other thing that I mentioned, Brian, just follow up is we do uh, administrate uh, the intake and the management of some of these positions through the career center. He overall manages, but the usual intake process that we have multiple languages. So even for the, the newcomers that are in the city, uh, we have individuals uh, speak in Haitian Creole. We have speakers now and we try and translate all of that. So there's a full court press for outreach and we'll be doing more of this because some of these positions, you know, they're very difficult. When you start talking about mental health providers that um, their, their job is, you know, going out, talking to people, homeless individuals living under bridges who have mental issues. Uh, that's a demanding job. So these are the types of individuals that would benefit from this training and also the companies that will benefit from trying to have some individuals trained that are higher ready. Mm -hmm. So, so how those who you mentioned, you've got companies participating now, organizations, but how does an organization, if they're not a part of this program already, how do they reach out to you and get the ball rolling? And also how do individuals get the ball rolling on this? Sure. They can, individuals can come to the career center and say, Hey, I want some, you know, do some training in, you know, the healthcare or the behavioral health grant, or if you're a business, you can come contact me directly and I'll get you, you know, signed up and become a part of the partnership. The Career Center here in downtown Lowell, diagonally across the street from us on yeah. Merrimack Street. Yeah. So you really, you really cannot miss it. And again, as we mentioned, there's more information uh, available on your, your website, which is? I always forget it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can try MassHireLowellCC.com or Google search Greater Lowell Workforce Board. All right. Awesome. And also, if you come on to Inside Lowell, InsideLowell.com, we have a story there with links to the relevant sites so folks can uh, get all the information. But, you know, congratulations. Another great program, badly needed training for, for our region here. I agree wholeheartedly. It's uh, This industry is difficult and we need to support it as, you know, best we can. All right. Brian Sock. Thank you. One last comment. Just uh, this helps us fill in some of the gaps because agencies get so busy, especially in these topics. Sometimes the uh, flow of services does not work together as well as you'd want it to. So I think this type of grant does exactly that. It brings our partners together. We have like strong 
unifying uh, discussions and processes to try and make the most of everybody's money and make the most good be done for the clients. And that's the most important thing. This sounds like the kind of thing where you may want to try to find a way to fund it even after the, the three years and that ARPA exactly. money kind of dries up, right? That, that three-year commitment is so important because, you know, you try and you, you try and plan for the stability of your employee as well as the stability of the client. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, uh, an employee knows the time ticks for one year um, and it's a difficult uh, position, it's going to be hard for retention. So giving that three-year stability in this is very, very important. And the commitment of the employees to come in, understand that that's the training. We've already worked with them to identify the slots. That's really going to be a key. So it's it's a great program. We're glad to be a part of it. And uh, we, through our career center and, and through Workforce Board, uh, really want to do our part with the city. The city has worked, you know, night and day for their outreach. We compliment the manager and the council and all the workers and what they do out here. And we're glad to be a part of that. Again, maybe like the transportation, it's not the total answer, but it's a piece of the answer. And we're glad to do our part. Every little bit helps. Kevin Coughlin, Executive Director of Mass Hire, Greater Lowell Workforce Board, Brian Sock, Program Coordinator for this Workforce Training Program. Thank you guys for joining us here in our studios. Good luck out there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you to them for joining us here in the WellPoint Studios, and thank you for joining us as well here for another Inside Lowell podcast. As we like to say, Inside Lowell, if Lowell is your home, this is your place. Till next time, be safe, everybody.